Hey guys, it's been a while since I've done this thing, and I apologize, but I've been very busy the past few weeks with machinima and podcasting, as well as uh, school and some other uh, insignificant shit. Hold on here, I got some Facebook messages. I think they're angry. One of them's uh, a wall post saying, oh, yeah. And then the other one's, um... The other one's a uh, post I commented on, and I... What? Okay, never mind, sorry. This wall post, this girl was like a quoting her boyfriend talking about indie music, and I went, Ew, indie, for the love of God, kill it with fire. And then she got really mad, and I was like, Oh, I'm just kidding, biatch. Get your shit together. And she's like, Oh, okay. But, uh... <laughs> She got all mad at me and I said, uh, it was a joke, clean that sand out of your vagipus. And then she said, LOL, fuck you. And so I said, love you, smiley face, heart. And, uh, yeah. And then I got another, uh, God, what's all these fucking wall posts? Everybody wants to love me when, okay, and then, okay. So anyways, I'm just gonna fucking, yeah, I'm just gonna ignore this. So, anyways. It's been a while. I promised Yuli and a few other people I'd make another vlog because it's been way since overdue. I'm fucking up my words today. Um, speaking of fucking up my words, I made a presentation uh, based around the book Darkly Dreaming Dexter, the first book in the Dexter Morgan series um, by uh, Jeff P. Lindsay that the show Dexter's based off of on Showtime about the serial killer, you know, blood spatter analyst, you know, gets away with crimes because he knows how to, you know, solve them himself, so whatever. And basically, I made this PowerPoint on the thing, uh, and Yuli was in my class, she knows this. And for the PowerPoint, I meant to say the main antagonist, you know, the bay, uh, the ice truck killer who, you know, slices up prostitutes and, you know, puts them in the freezer and shit, and then he delivers them to the cops and he thinks it's really funny and shit. And um, basically, throughout the entire duration of like the 10 sly PowerPoint, every time I was supposed to have the word antagonist, I put protagonist. And the two are completely different things. The guy who's killing the prostitutes and, you know, chopping them up and stuff, he's not the hero at all. And someone pointed this out to me after slide one, they're like, yeah, don't you mean antagonist? I'm like, you're right, I'm a fucking idiot. But, you know, I kept my integrity, I didn't say anything such as that in front of the class, I went, Wow, I'm stupid. And every time I, you know, came across and I was reading off my points and I kept saying, Oh yeah, and then the, you know, the protagonist, the guy who sliced up the prostitutes, fuck! And I just, you know, I kept rolling, you know, in my head, those were the, the fucks were in my mind. And I kept going, I kept going, and you know, every time I saw that, it just drove me nuts because I felt so stupid. Like, have you ever done that where, you know, you type up this long paper and you look for all these mistakes, but you look so hard that you don't notice, like, any of the major ones, and then someone else is like, Oh, you're a fucking idiot. That's how I feel right now. And that's how I look in front of my class. So I'm wondering if my teacher, you know, actually believed me or if she thinks that I'm just like full of shit. Like I don't know, you know, know my basic, you know, archetypes here. And so I'm, the, I'm one of the most talkative people in that class as far as discussion goes. So I think she'll know the difference. But anyways, yeah, that was my morning. Um, life has been chaotic lately with, you know, all these new projects for Newscape Pro, uh, the, you know, Newscape Productions, the production group I'm in for Machinima. We've got... Uh, a podcast out called Scapecast now. We've got Flesh Candy on the way, the Zombie Machinima. We've got Project Nirvana, my comedy series in Halo Reach, as well as Snowman, which is another action series that I'm filming and editing and you know directing essentially for my friend Jacob Walbridge since he's writing the whole thing. And there is so much shit going on with that giant tank. And not to mention, I've got, you know, this is like finals week for school, and I only have like one actual final, which is a test for math. And that's all I really even, you know, I'm, I don't really even need to worry about since the other classes I'm passing just peachy and, yeah, whatever. And so, so shit's been chaotic, but, you know, at least at the end of the week, um, I have a choir trip for my school. We're going to go down to San Antonio, Texas. It's going to be awesome. And we get to uh, meet up with this uh, guy who's a composer and, you know, he's a choir director and his name's Craig Hella Johnson. And he, basically he leads a choir called Conspirari down south, and these guys are awesome. They sound like Enya, that sort of, like, that ghostly, whispered, choral singing kind of thing. You know, I'm a, guy, a band guy, you know, like a rock and roll guy going to choir. 
you know, and I've been in choir forever, but still, I'm not great with terminology. I'm not great, you know, with, like, all the, the vocab for it. So forgive me for sounding like a fucking idiot. Anyways, these guys sound amazing, and we don't get to meet up with Conspirari down south, but we do get to meet up with Craig Hella Johnson, get some private coaching and stuff from him, which is going to be really cool because normally I'm not into, you know, these uh, choral director types uh, and that sort of thing, you know, where you have to watch videos about them and stuff, but this guy had an amazing voice. Um, it's in the same range as mine, essentially. Or mine's in the same range as his, I should say. And so I think the coaching is going to go well because, you know, I can actually get some useful warm-ups that can relate to my voice. So I'm not sitting here singing really high tenor shit like, oh! And that's a relief to me. But um, in Texas, we're going to do some really cool shit down in uh, San Antonio. We're going to go to the Alamo. We're going to go to the Riverwalk. We're going to go do all kinds of fun shit. And, you know, I love plane rides. You know, I've only been on one once. It's a fun, you know, thing to just sit and listen to an iPod for five hours and tell everybody to fuck off. That's the way I like to roll. That's the way I like to do things. Don't get me wrong. I love people, but sometimes I just want people, everybody just to just shut the fuck up and mind their own business. Um, like tonight, I was working on my website and I was working on, you know, uh, Newscape production stuff and my brother's sitting next to me on the Xbox because I had this capture card set up with the TV's right here, computer's right here, capture card's right here, and everything's in the same, you know, vicinity in the room. And so... My brother is sitting here nudging me and annoying the shit out of me, and he has to act like a Tourette's child. No offense to anyone, whenever he plays video games. And I don't know why, but he has to make these horse noises. He has to sit and wave his arms around. He has to go, Aah! And he does the most annoying shit on Earth, and I don't even know how to deal with it sometimes. Like, I asked my mom. I asked if we can somehow find a way to exploit him and sell him to Disney or Nickelodeon, you know, for a cast of some new show. Because he's like one of those annoying kids you see on TV, and you're like, kids aren't like that. Well, my brother is like that, and it irritates the shit out of me. So if anyone would like to take him, please do. I love him to death, but sometimes he annoys the living shit out of me. Anyways, I'm aware that I'm probably talking really fast. I don't know where I got this rush of adrenaline and that sort of thing, but, you know, I'm loving it because I can get, you know, cover more ground in less time. So what else do I want to talk about here? Okay, apparently foreign people love stuff like Iggy Pop and David Bowie and Lou Reed and that whole, you know, 70s Roxy, glam rock scene, apparently, because I brought... Uh, my bag to school today that had an Iggy Pop stencil on it, you know, that my dad did for me, uh, since he's a great artist and stuff, and, like, a bunch of foreign exchange students came up to me and complimented me on this bag, and people, you know, other people complimented me on it, and it was mainly the foreign exchange students where I asked, you know, how do you guys, why, you know, how do you guys know so much about this? And they said that it's, you know, a part of their culture, you know, they a lot of them like Iggy Pop, and a lot of them like, you know, American music from the 70s, and it's a big thing where, you know, this girl said she was in a class over here, and they showed these faces and asked the students who they were. And they showed one of David Bowie off the Aladdin Sane cover with the, you know, the lightning bolt or whatever coming down his face. And they asked all the kids who it was, and nobody knew. But, you know, this girl from Italy knew right off the bat. So it just astonishes me, you know, that someone that's that important. And I know he's from the U.K. and stuff, but it's, he's still a very big icon even, you know, to Americans. Because, you know, American music and, you know, British music kind of fall into the same category a lot of times. So I just, it's crazy. And, uh, yeah, I made a couple new friends today, a girl named Samantha, uh, a girl named Julia, who's a foreign exchange student from Italy, friends with Yuli from Germany, very cool chick, and, uh, there's a guy, I can't remember his name, but, uh, he's got very blonde hair, I used to sit with, sit with him at lunch, he's a nice guy, I'm sorry if you're watching this, that I completely blanked out and forgot your name, but somebody will remind me, so I don't feel like an asshole, or I don't feel as stupid, and so... Yeah, I love meeting new people, and today was one of those days where I met, like, five new people, and so I was like, sweet! And, anyways, the Gibbs is very social when he feels like it, and this week is one of those weeks where, you know, I get up every day and I'm feeling like a Queen song or something, you know, not not about the gayness or any of that, just because, you know, the self-motivation aspect, or, you know, I'm just getting up out of bed and just ready to go out and conquer the world, and it's wonderful. I, like, seriously, Queen takes up most of my morning playlist every single morning, and, you know, I head out the door. That and Hall and Oates. Call it as gay as you... It's as gay as you want to think it is. But Hall and Oates are amazing. I love them. And You Make My Dreams is one of the best songs ever off the album Voices. And that's sort of a recommendation, but I don't know. Not really. Not if you're not into Hall and Oates. I suggest you don't listen to it because you'll probably fucking hate it. But I, it's a guilty pleasure of mine, and I have no problem admitting that. Now, um, holy shit. I just realized I've been just rambling, and I don't even know what I was just talking about. But, um, yeah, I'm feeling good this week. It's great. I can't wait for, you know, new terms to start in school and that sort of thing, so I can, you know, catch up on some shit I haven't been, you know, productive enough with, you know, such as my projects and that sort of thing. And 
It's going to be great. Now, uh, if you guys want to check out Scapecast, the first episode of the official new Scape po uh, Productions podcast, there's not a website for it yet or anything, and you know, since the New Scape Productions website isn't finished yet, but uh, if you go to our Twitter at twitter.com slash newscapepro, you'll find a link to not only the RSS feed to subscribe on iTunes, but you'll find a link to the first episode as well as an MP3 on the server uh, that we're on, so that's all good. Now, I think that's about all I have to say since, you know, I gotta go do some dishes, I gotta take care of some laundry, I got a lot of shit to do, but anyways... Uh, thanks for watching. I hope to have another one of these videos out, you know, within uh, a day or two so I can get back on a schedule, you know, that works for me and, you know, you can enjoy it too because apparently a lot of people like to watch these so I wasn't aware of that but now that I'm aware of that, you know, I think I'll do my best to put out more. Alright, peace.